Good evening. How are you guys doing? Well, like Heidi said, my name is Jeff Kingsford. I am not Pastor Aaron. Our pastors are uh, enjoying some time together in Texas at a minister's conference, which is always great for us. That means they come back um, next week just filled with the Word, just fired up, just, um, just full of you know, getting some alone time, some relaxing time. So we always reap the benefits. Amen? Amen. Praise. That means you have to come back. This is your first time here, right? Don't base your uh, attendance or, or the, the desire to, you know, to stay with us or join the family based on the words that I speak, even though I believe you are here at the right place at the right time. And this word is for you tonight, but you have to come back. Our pastors, they're the best. Amen? They're as good as they get. Amen? They've, the word that they've preached has changed my life forever. I'm so grateful for it. Praise God. Has it, has it made a difference in your life? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me open in prayer, and we'll get right into the Word. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives, for what you've done, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We haven't even seen anything yet, Jesus. Holy Ghost, help me this evening. Help me, Lord, speak exactly what you would have for your people to hear. You know exactly what every single person here is going through. You know, the issues in their heart or the things in their mind that they've been dealing with. And I thank you, your word has an answer for every single one of those, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, use me, speak through me this evening. And I thank you, we leave here with answers and that we won't just hear the word, but we are doers of the word as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah. So I want to start off, first of all, I think I should just call Jake back up here and just let him finish what he was, what he was preaching. I could listen to that all night. Um, I mean, my daughter, uh, when he's telling that testimony, my daughter was uh, two years old, so she just started going to uh, the school then, and she's 13 now and still, still attends, and the school has been such a, such a blessing. But I love the fact, because I wasn't actually at that meeting, Jake and Pastor Aaron were there, and... Uh, Jake said, yeah, this, this thing was going, not in these words, but something like, yeah, this ship was sinking until pastor had to stand up and, and speak to the storm. And he goes, uh, now we got some work to do. So I said, all right, let's, let's join arms and let's, let's get this thing done. And it was a, uh, there was nights, I mean, he would work all day and they would have a, a board meeting at night. And he kept saying, when are you going to join the board? When are you going to join? I'm like, I am not joining that board. <laughs> I'm like, that is all, I'm here for you, I, that is all, you take that one, I'm here to, to help you out, but it was just to, just to see the blessing of the Lord, just, just really just take, the, take it to the next level, we've seen so many lives changed, and the education our children have had, have had has just been awesome, teachers have been blessed, so, you know, it only takes one, amen, it doesn't matter if your whole family is full of backslidden heathens, it doesn't matter if your whole company is full of crooked crooks. It only takes one faithful. Amen. He would, have, he would have came back, it says in the word, just for one faithful. All it, took, all it takes is one. He's looking for just somebody to use their faith. Who, who's using their faith? Who can I help? Who can I bless? He's looking for faith. Amen. Say, that's me. So I want to talk to you tonight. There's benefits for having Jesus in your heart. There's benefits. But there's those benefits really happen exponentially when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. So if I, if I said, how many of you have asked Jesus to come into your heart? And if a raise of hands, probably the majority of people in here would raise their hands. But if I ask the same question, how many people in here has made Jesus the Lord of their life? I don't know confidently if every single person in here could raise their hand and say, you know what, I have made him the Lord of my life. Well, what does that mean to make him Lord of my life? To make him the Lord of your life, it means that he has the first say and the final say of everything you do. It means if he said it, then it's, then it's going to happen. It's for me. If his word said it, then I'm settling it. I'm going to get fully persuaded on what he said. It's going to him first in every situation. It's getting the green light from him before moving forward. So I want to touch on five benefits. There's so many more, but I want to focus on the time we have tonight on five of them. 
The first one is he fulfills. When you make him the Lord of your life, he will fulfill. He'll fulfill greater than any pleasure, any desire, any vice, any, any, anything that tries to, to fill a void in your life. He has a way to fulfill greater than that. The second thing is he has advice better than Google. He has the ability to give you advice and insight and knowledge and wisdom on things better than any of the smartest people or search engines on the planet. The third thing, by making him the Lord of your life, you have protection greater than the most trained security guard. The fourth is, by making him the Lord of your life, by putting him first place, he has a way to provide greater than the biggest paycheck, the biggest company, the biggest job you could ever have. He is provision for us. And the fifth and final one we're going to touch on tonight is by making him the Lord of your life, healing is available greater than the most trained surgeon. And I don't, I want to, don't want you just to take my word for it this evening. I'm going to show you specifically in the word how these are available for us. And then I'm also, I want to give you a practical example, maybe a personal example or testimony of something that's happened either here with somebody at the church or, or my own personal life. Amen? So if you can start by opening up to Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Praise God. Verse 21. It says, verse 20 actually, it says, which he worked in Christ Jesus, that's me, when he raised him from the dead and he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above principalities, powers, and might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. He put all things under his feet, and he gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus fulfills. And in 1 Thessalonians, it talks about how we should be complete, wanting nothing in spirit, soul, and body. He wants all of us complete, completely filled. I'm not just talking about like a, a temporary Botox shot. I'm not talking about whatever, chick, whatever McDonald's puts in those chicken nuggets. I'm talking about he fills all in all. That means any void, any addiction, alcohol, food, drugs, pornography, whatever it is. The beautiful thing about him when he fulfills, he replaces. Hallelujah. He replaces. It's like when the, the example Pastor Angie gave of a full cup of milk and you stick a hose in it. His filling just, takes, just overflows whatever's in your life and just completely just takes it away. I personally witnessed this in my life. My wife and I, when we started coming to the church, we were only dating. And uh, the weekend before we, we came to church was in April 2002, which is almost 20 years ago. We had no plans of coming to a church to get plugged into a church. We, had, we came at, at, from an invitation. It was Easter Sunday, and pa I ran into Pastor Aaron on the basketball court. He said, hey, we're starting a church. Would you, would you come out? And uh, my wife, at that time, my girlfriend, and I looked at her and I said, hey, tomorrow's Easter. Everyone goes to church on Easter. <laughs> you want to go? And surprisingly, she said yes. And we went to church and all of a sudden we heard Pastor Aaron minister and he started teaching us things that I've never heard before. He started teaching about the promises of God, the goodness of God. And I may have heard it in the past, but it never hit me like it hit me that, that Sunday. And uh, we said, we, I, I got to come back to this thing. I got to hear this again. Like, this, this sounds too good to be true. So we came back on Thursday, and we went back on Sunday. Then we went back on Thursday. Then we went back on Sunday. Next thing you know, it's August, and we haven't missed a service yet. And we're flying out to Texas to go listen to, to Kenneth Copeland and five other ministers eight, nine hours a day. Like, what just happened? Well, at the same time, it wasn't like my wife, my, I'm, I'm going to call her my wife because she's my wife now. It wasn't like we were both like, hey, let's stop drinking. Hey, let's stop going to the clubs. It was like it just kind of fell off of us. It was the, the desire to do that. We did not struggle at all. And if you're struggling, I'm going to let you know that that freedom is available for you this evening. 
Just like Jake mentioned, the, the altar cannot consume itself. There has to be something laid on the altar in order for it to be consumed. And I want him to say, listen, I want, it's time for you tonight to make him Lord of your life. And that that anointing consume with fire and just burn it right off your life. But it wasn't like we were like, oh, man, I need a drink. Or, oh, man, I'm craving this. Or, oh, man, you remember that, that hip-hop song, R. Kelly, blah, 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 that we used to go bump and grind to? No, no, no. It was none of that. It just disappeared. And it was the Lord just fulfilled the voids in our heart. He replaced it with his, with his, his word and his desire. It just immediately changed. I believe that's available for every single one of us. There's nowhere in his word that says that you have to endure forever. Amen? If it's part of the curse, we've been redeemed from it. Amen? The second thing that will happen that will come when you make him the Lord of your life is you will start getting some of the best advice that you ever have, have ever received. Amen? Let's look at what the word says in John chapter 16, verse 13. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you here have, have gone to Google before going to the Lord? I've been, I'm guilty of it. Ah, oh, Lord, what, what should I do in this situation? Oh, let me Google it. Well, what's it going to take to, to buy that? Let me, let me go to, uh, to mortgage.com and pull up that mortgage calculator and put in the percentage and let me say, oh, 15 years, oh, maybe 30 years, oh, that, 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 that's about, I can afford that. You're letting the computer and the calculators tell you what to do instead of the Lord. No, no, no. That's not how it works in the kingdom. You're going to have to recognize that when he's the Lord of your life, that means he has to be the first and the last. He has to be the whole thing. It's 100% what he says is what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to receive. And in Ephesians, I mean in uh, John chapter 16, it says, however, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. Say, he will guide me. He will guide me into all truth. That means anything you want to know, the Spirit of the Lord will guide you. He'll help you. Anything. I cannot take credit for the investments I've made. I cannot take an ounce of credit for any of the, the, the finances and the, the, the prosperity of my life. That's why it's so easy for me to volunteer my time here at West Coast Word Church. I am a volunteer just like many of you, I, it's, I, don't, I don't ask, and if the church wants to bless me financially, they can, but it is so easy for me to volunteer my time here because I would not have anything outside of here if it wasn't for the word that was taught to me from, from the pulpit here. So it's simple for me. I, I have no problem coming here Sundays, Thursdays. You want me here on a Wednesday? Sure. Why? Because I know what I have is because the word that I've been taught from here, so it's very simple for me. But one of the things I learned here when it comes to advice is, and this will, this will help you, all right? So li listen up to this. This, this, will, this, one of this. this is one of the truths that I think that will set you up for success for the rest of your life. And it is having the advice of the Holy Spirit or a knowing before making big decisions. Even small decisions, but I want to I focus on big decisions for a second. Has the Lord ever called you maybe to start a new job? Maybe he's, he's calling you to maybe a relationship or maybe he's, he's telling you maybe to step out and start going to school somewhere else. Or maybe it's just a big change in your life and you're really like on the fence. You don't know what to do. I want to encourage you to just commit that to prayer on a daily basis. Just commit it to prayer. Lord, I want to know the peace of God in my heart on what to do with this situation. And until you have that peace in your heart, which you only, you're the only one that knows, all right? It's like when I married my wife, I knew that I knew in my heart. You couldn't tell me. I can't even explain how. I was just in the word, and I, was, I asked the Lord for wisdom. I said, give me peace, and I had the peace. Once I had the peace, what I did then was I settled it in my heart that that was the Lord. That's important. You have to know the voice of the Lord. And how do you get to know the voice of the Lord? You talk to him. The same way I get to know the voice of Jake or of Ralph or of John or David. I, I commune with them. I can conversate with them. If any of them called me now, I don't have to say, hey, who is this? Because I'm familiar with his voice. You get familiar with his voice just by talking. You can talk to the Lord the same way I'm talking to you. You can talk to him. You can say, Lord, what's going on here? What gives? What, you know, this is the situation. But you have to get quiet enough to hear him. 
And you have to have the word in your heart because he speaks through his word. Amen? So you ask the Lord, Lord, what am I supposed to do in this situation? And, you, and my advice is you don't do anything until you know that you know what to do. And if you don't know yet, then you just wait. There's no, there's no rules of life that say you have to make decisions. How many times have you been tried to pressure into making a decision? Oh, you got to let me know by Friday. The promo ends Friday. Listen, I've owned a company. That promo never ends on Friday. It doesn't matter. Every single sales rep that has come up to me and said, hey, I know it's Monday and that promo ended on Friday, but someone's trying to give us $1,000. Can I take their money? I never, ever did I ever say no. The promo never ends on Friday. You're just not talking to the right person. All right? If the person's telling you no, all you have to do is say, all right, well, give me the person that is telling you that you, say, you can't say no. Eventually, you'll get to somebody that'll say, sure, I'll take your money. All right? So there's no rules of life that say you have to make a decision at a certain time. And even if they do, the Lord can go and change things after the fact and even make it better for you. I've had that happen plenty of times. I've shared the testimony back. I'm not going to go into it too deep, but we were trying to buy a piece of equipment. It was the last piece of equipment that we could find in the area for the price we wanted it, and we didn't want to buy it because we didn't want to go in debt. Well, we waited. We waited, I think, four weeks or something like that. He sold it to another company who couldn't afford it, who came back to us and gave it to us at a discount, and we ended up getting it delivered for free. I didn't have, we didn't have peace to do it. We waited, and it was benefit for, for us to, to wait. Amen? So you have to get the green light before moving forward, and here's the reason why. Every time you step out in faith and do something God's calling you to do, every time, just know there is going to be pressure and trials and trouble that tries to come and take you off course. Just know that. Just know, okay, this, this is going to come. I'm not trying to speak doom and gloom over you or negativity, but Satan, when you're doing the will of God, does not like you doing the will of God. He wants to take you off course. He's going to try to distract you. He's going to try to take you out of your wealthy place. He's going to try to get you offended. Amen? He's going to just try to take you off course. When that happens, you can now say, no, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to quit because I know that I know that I heard from the Lord back then. That's what you said. You go back to where you knew you heard from the Lord and you say, no, 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 no. I've, I've counseled with many people before and they said, Jeff, I stepped out in faith. You know, I'm doing what I feel like God wants me to do and it's like every time I turn around, it feels like I'm getting the rug pulled out from under me. And my only advice, I can't tell them if they're right or wrong. I, all I can say is, did you hear from the Lord to do what you're doing? And if they can't say with confidence, yes, then we need, our, the, the prayer is, Lord, show him now if this is what he's supposed to be doing. Because if he does say yes or she does say yes, we can say, well, this is just, we're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we hear. We're going to stay the course. Amen? It's easy for you to stay the course and not give up if you know that you know. Even if your wife starts going crazy, your husband starts going crazy, your business partner starts going crazy, the economy starts going crazy. If you know you knew back then, you can say, all right. Because we went and we owned our own business. We heard from the Lord coming to West Coast World Church. We went through crazy things. I mean, we went through 2008 recession. We went through the 2012 recession. We had the FBI show up. We had our database stolen. We had employees not show up. I mean, there was plenty of things that happened to us where we were like, man, this is no fun. I'm, I want to quit. Lord, this can't be you. No, but we knew what he said, so we just were able to ride it out. Amen? Number three. The protection of God. When you can't fend for yourself, he's there to protect you. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, it says, The Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Amen? He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. It doesn't mean that Satan's not going to try to sneak in. It doesn't mean he's not going to try to pull one over on you. But we, you have to know, when I, make the, when I make Jesus the Lord of my life, protection is available for me. Even when you miss it. I've missed it. I, my wife and I, when we first got married, um, 
we went on a, a ski vacation that the Lord did not give us a green light to go on. My wife knew. I pushed it. I'm like, you've never been skiing before. You got to go skiing. It's the best thing ever. She's like, I'm from Peru. It's never been over 65 degrees, lower than 65 degrees. She's like, I don't need to see snow. I'm like, oh, you got to see snow. You're going to love it. Let's go to Colorado in February. <laughs> we left that vacation three days early. It was miserable. It was a blizzard hit that town. You couldn't, we couldn't even leave the room. And then in the room was miserable because it was so dry. It was like you were just bleeding from your nose in your room because there was no moisture at all. And we live in Florida where there's moisture year round. The humidity here is 100 and there is negative. And we went out on the slopes and she could, my wife is a extremely talented athlete. We got on those slopes and it was like Bambi on ice. I didn't, see, I didn't think legs could bend that way. Skis, this, that. She's like, this is the worst thing ever. Then we got on the plane on the way home, and I don't mind turbulence, but this plane must, I felt like this plane fell out of the sky. Like I felt like my butt was coming off the seat. Boom, boom. I was gripping her hand like, Lord, I apologize. Just get me home. I need your protection. See, his advice, which I just told you about, and his protection go hand in hand. If you get his advice, his protection comes with it. When you override the advice, now you're, you're all right, Lord, I, you need to make my mistakes prosper. You need to make sure I don't slip, fall, or fail, or all three in the same time. So the word promises protection, but it's guaranteed when you make him the Lord of your life. Amen? I, had, I, was at West Coast, I was at our old facility running cable through, <laughs> through the ceiling, which, again, is something that I did not get advice from the Holy Spirit to do. And uh, I had the ladder. It was four, 13 feet up in the air, and the ladder I had was too short, and the wire I was trying to reach was too far. And, you know, when you just try to reach a little bit too far, and I had, like, my foot on the ladder, I'm, like, leaning. The ladder leg bent, and the ladder folded up not the way it folds. It folds like it folded sideways. I came crashing through the ceiling, through the tiles, straight onto the concrete floor in church. And I thank the Lord, the protection of God. Jake comes walking around. I got fiberglass all over me. He's like, what happened to you? I'm like, don't go on that ladder. But I was thankful for the protection of God. He'll protect you even when you do stupid things. But when you make him the Lord of your life and you got his advice and you're being led by the Spirit, he's going to keep you out of so much more trouble. Amen? The fourth thing that he'll do for you as the Lord, it's what he could spend a week on this one, is he's going to provide for you. He wants to provide for you better than any paycheck, better than any job you could ever, ever even imagine. I, and I, I mean, I could just talk about one provision after another provision after another time he provided and another time how he provided. But one of the testimonies that just stand out to me, it's one of the greatest blessings that I've, that I've received, the testimony I received was a young lady. Uh, she moved here from South America. She barely spoke English. She was a single mom. And uh, she was working two days a week at a cleaning company and just trying whatever she could do to make ends meet. And uh, we were talking about what the, I, the Lord put on my heart to teach on, you know, tithing and blessing and how, we, you know, we put the Lord first with our finances. And she said she had $10 left in her pocket and she was going to buy lunch for her son. She even said, I was planning on going to Wendy's and I was planning on getting him lunch. And she said, when she heard the word go forth, that you could be debt free in a moment and that the Lord could, by the end of the day, I, I said the, the word that went forth was by the end of the day, you could be debt free. By the end of the day, she said, by the end of the day, Lord, she's like, I'm getting in agreement with this. And she's like, I, what am I going to do with this $10? And she, tied, she sewed it, gave it in the offering, her last $10. That's, great. That's the greater gift than I've ever given. I've never given everything I've had. And she said she got home from church that day, and there was a, a voicemail on her answering machine at the house. And it was her boss, and she said, and he said, I had to call you. I know it's Sunday. Sorry to bother you. But I wanted to move you to full time. On a Sunday. By the end of the day. She went from part time to full time. 
Well, it didn't stop there. She, you know that, that if it worked that fast, she started giving every opportunity she had. Look, this is fun. Like, all right, whatever came into her, I'm going to give here and give there. Next thing you know, she's married. Next thing you know, she, used to, she was in college in South America. She started going to, I think, USF. And you, she, wanted, she wanted to go to be, be an accountant. And she had like 80% of her credits already done in South America. USF transferred all of her credits. Name a university that likes to do that. No, they want your money. They want you to start over. Her husband was able to work at some good things happening. She, she graduated top of her class there at USF and now is a staff accountant at one of the largest companies in Pinellas County. Family's blessed. Children's blessed. In just a few short years, she went from sewing her last $10 to married, beautiful family, and a wonderful job. That's the provision of God. Amen? He wants to provide for his children, but he wants to be Lord of our life. He just doesn't want to be the one we call on every three months when there's a problem. No, he wants to be involved every day. What do you I wear to work? Where do I drive to work? Where do I work? What do I eat for lunch? What do I eat for dinner? What... Well, who should I talk to? Who should I not talk to? Who should I pray for? Every day, he just wants to be the Lord of our life, not just someone we say he's in our heart. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. In Philippians 4.19, he says, And my God will supply my need according, every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him... Who is able to carry out his purpose and to do my favorite word, I think, in the New Testament, super abundantly. Say super abundantly. It's in the Bible. You can't say that wealth is not available when there's words like super abundantly. Like he could have used any word he wanted. He used super abundantly. And even more than you can dare ask or think, infinitely beyond your greatest prayers, hopes, dreams, according to the power at work. Where? Within you. That's where it's working. It works within you. You have to recognize the work Jesus did, he's done. When he said, it is finished, he wasn't joking. It wasn't like, a, it's not until next week. No, he said, I'm doing everything I need to do on the cross for you now. And it's more beneficial that I do this so I can go up and be with my father so the greater one could come who will live in you, hallelujah, be with you to help us every day. I mean, if you're the disciples, you're like, dude, you're crazy. Like, there's a lot of good things that are happening with you around. Like, everyone's getting healed. Everyone. There's not a person that didn't get healed. He said he hit... He healed all that came to him and needed healing. Praise God. And you're going to leave? No, don't leave us. No, I'm leaving you so something better. So you can go do the same things that I'm doing today. You can go do those things and even greater things shall you do because I go to the Father. That's what his word says. And it tells us here that he will do through us infinitely beyond our greatest prayers. Whatever prayer you can pray, he wants to do more. You can't. Outthink him. You can't. Get, get as crazy as you want, he'll do more. He will. This is the God we serve. He is an unlimited, inexhaustible source. <clears throat> we are the only ones that limit him. And I can tell you over the last 19 years, every time I've taken the limits off, he's just met me where I, wherever my faith goes, he'll meet me there. And I said, all right, I'm going to step out a little bit further. And I, he'll, he'll meet me there. I'm going to just, like Jake said, just one step at a time. I'm going to step out again. Oh, wow, look, you're there again. Wow, I'm going to do something crazy, Lord. We're going to move into a, a 25,000 square foot facility in one week before Christmas Eve. All right, we'll do it. And I'll have two salvations happen before we even open the door. We were believing God for salvations for Christmas Eve. We're like, all right, Lord. I literally said, Lord, I'm gonna, I'm, we're, we're giving up our Christmas season. I said this jokingly. I don't know, Pastor Aaron or Jake. I said, I said Pastor, there better be a salvation on Christmas Eve. Because we're not even seeing our family this holiday. He comes up to me like the, the day before. He's like, ah, two done. He was counseling a husband and a wife. And both of them got 
got born again before the doors even open. We're sitting here hanging lights. They're sitting on the front row getting, getting, getting born again. I said, all right, Lord, we'll take it. I believe there's going to be thousands that come to the Lord through this facility and through the, the online here. Amen? We haven't even seen anything yet. We've got some big dreams. We've got some big hopes, some big prayers, and he's going to do infinitely above all we can ask or think. Amen? Praise God. The fifth one is he wants to be our healer. Healing. He's not just someone who heals. He is healing himself. He wants us well because we cannot enjoy all those other four benefits if we're sick in our bodies. It says in his word that he desires above all else that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. That's what his word says. Above all else, in Mark 9, 23, it says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. It's just getting more of the doubt that the world has sown out of our life and replaced with the goodness of God and what his word says. As soon as those scales flip, that's when the goodness of God starts to go to work. As soon as the doubt gets out, because faith and doubt can't work together, as soon as that doubt is out, I am fully persuaded, Lord, that I am healed by Jesus' stripes. Amen? Acts 10.38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It was God with you. Does his word says he'll never leave you or forsake you? then the same thing shall be happening in our life. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And if ye are Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There's your answer. Is that for me? Are you an heir according to the promise? The Bible says you are an heir. That means if it's Jesus's, it's yours. And if he redeemed us from the curse of the law, it's been redeemed in your life. Amen? Praise God. I saw this happen in my personal life a couple times, actually, in the last couple years. Um, I was a couple years ago, I was playing basketball, and I'm just grateful my whole life I really never had a major sports injury. I played sports my whole life, and I think one time I maybe semi-fractured a finger or something like that. I was out for a couple weeks, but other than that, I never broke a bone. I had stitches, you know, I hit my face like five or six times. My mom was wondering, what, you know, why I kept coming home and needing stitches, but I never had a major sports injury. But a couple years back, I uh, did something to my knee. And I uh, went in, I got it, it was bothering me, it was hurting. I went in, I got an MRI, and the doctor said that I tore, tore a ligament in my knee. And I said, well, you know, what does that mean? He goes, well, the basketball you're playing, the CrossFit you're doing, he goes, stop doing it. He goes, uh, you know, unless you want surgery, he said, you can get it repaired, and, you know, then, then there's rehab and things like that. I'm like, and I just prayed about it, and I didn't have a release to, you know, to have surgery. So I just, I just got in his word where healing's concerned. I can tell you, I probably know 50, 100 scriptures, maybe more, where provision of God is concerned because every Sunday or Thursday, I'm up here teaching about finances, I'm studying about finances, so I know I'll never have a financial deficit ever again in my life because I've got so much of the word where finances are concerned in my life that it, I've seen million-dollar deficits, $100,000 deficits, and the Lord just, I just know what his word says, and he's always been faithful there. So it's been easy for me where finances are concerned. Why? Because I have built my faith where finances are concerned on a, on, on a weekly basis for the last 15 years. Well, healing, I don't spend too much time studying healing. I mean, I study it, but it's not like every week. So I had to get refreshed. I had to get more healing word in my heart where healing was concerned. So what it, if I desired healing in my knee, I didn't just go study about finances, I said, all right, Lord, let me just go through your word. Let me see what you say in 3 John 2. Let me see what you say in 1 John 5, 14. Let me see what you say in Philippians 4, 6. Let me see what you say in Acts 10, 38, in Mark 10, 27, in Mark 9, 23. And I just started, wow, everywhere I look, healing is available. Healing is available. Healing is available. Healing is available. I'm like, man, this is, this is too good. I didn't 
it, I didn't have a tingling moment in my knee. I, didn't, I just started acting like my knee was healed. I slow, started slowly getting back into CrossFit. And, and you know, Mike was training. And, we, you know, I didn't just go in there and just start jumping around with 300 pounds on my back. No, I, was, I used wisdom and I stepped through it. Next thing you know, I'm like, man, I can do everything I could do before I hurt my knee without any pain. And I just said, I thank you, Lord, that my knee is healed in my life. Praise God. It was, to me, it was like, wow. Another time, just two years ago, I was playing football on Thanksgiving morning. And I did something and I tweaked out my back so bad that I couldn't even bend over to put my socks on. It was, I've never experienced pain like that ever in my life. Like as soon as I went to bend over, it, like it took me to my knees. And this happened for weeks. And to the point where it got, started getting a little bit better where I could manage it. And I'm like, man, I should not have to be managing this pain based on the word. And then I did something even stupider. I went and picked up a, a heavy um, pressure washer to put it in my truck. And as soon as I went, whoosh, my whole back just went out. And... I remember that was on a Saturday, and I came to church the next Sunday, and I had to come up on stage, and it took everything in me to get up on stage that Sunday, to the point we had stairs like this to the side. Just getting up those stairs, I went up so gingerly, and I went up, and I just stood behind the pulpit like this, and I was trying not to move, and the word of God was going forth, and then my eyes were closed, and the next thing I know, Pastor Aaron standing right next to me. And he starts praying and starts confessing healing over the body of Christ. And he, I think he was trying to get my attention because I was sitting here with my eyes closed. And he just came up kind of behind me and just kind of put his hand on my back to kind of let me know that he was there. Not to, not to pray over my back or anything like that. And he's just praying over the, the congregation. He's got his hand on his back and I'm just sitting here just believing God. I didn't feel fire on my back. I didn't feel anything. I just closed my, when I, he was done, I, I closed my Bible. I go to walk off the stage thinking that I'm going to have to take my time off the step. And I'm like, hey, it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Just like that. So I can confidently look at you and say the healing of God, the power of God is a real thing. And the beautiful thing about it is he's no respecter of persons. It's not because I volunteer at West Coast Word Church that I get, uh, you know, privileges that you, you don't have. It's not because I've t I'm a tither. A tither definitely does help, but he is no respecter of persons. Amen? If he did it for me, he will 100% do it for you. Amen? In closing, I want to end by kind of how my studying typically starts. And any time I have the honor, and I do consider it an honor to, to be up here and to minister to you, and I appreciate your, your attentiveness and, and drawing it out of me, because what comes forth is not all about what the minister studies. It's, you have just as big of a part to play in the word that goes forth as the person that's delivering it. And every time I, I, not, I want to say every time, I, I try to every time before, getting, before starting my studying, I ask the Lord, I say, Lord, what is it? that you want me to tell your people. And I can tell you unequivocally, almost immediately, the answer I get every time is to tell you how much he loves you. It's like, tell him I love him. Tell him how much I love him. Tell him how much I love him. Every time I ask, it is like, wham. Tell him how much I love him. And the verse that really just goes off inside is 1 John 4, 16. And it says... And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. We can read about God's love. We can hear about God's love. But do we believe, truly believe in our heart that he loves us? Do you believe in your, in your heart, you know what, God, God loves me. Like, no, he loves me. Because I believe that when that belief really takes place in your heart is when things change in your life. When you know that you know that your heavenly father loves you, then you know that any situation you get yourself in, he desires for you to get out. And he's made a way, like Jake said, like Pastor Aaron said, there's a way out. In John 10, it talks about how the sheep 
hear my voice and that he is leading us out. He's leading us out of what? Out of every situation into something better. Well, I'm already in something good. Oh, he wants to take us somewhere better. Do you believe in your heart that he loves you? If you don't, then it's simple. You just get into his word and just start looking up. Oh, look what it says. You can start in the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16. And you can get revelation from two letters in that verse because it says God so loved the world. That's different. That word so is a big deal because you have been hungry and you have been so hungry. And typically when you're so hungry, there's something that happens after it. I'm so hungry that I could eat my arm. Or I'm so hungry that you better feed me. It's a lot different than I'm hungry. I'm hungry, yeah, I could eat later. But when you're so hungry, it means something better changed. There needs to be some corresponding action. Well, that's why he said God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus. He went through it all for us. He did it all. Took it all on the cross for us because he loved us that much. He wants healing in our body. He wants protection over our life. He wants to fulfill all in all. He wants to provide for us in a way that, he, that you've never been provided for before again. And he wants healing, health in your body above all things. Amen? Did you get something out of this? Praise God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just close your eyes. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give you two opportunities tonight. The first one is simple. It's not complicated. It's not difficult. It's not expensive. The only thing it will cost you is your flesh. And it's to ask Jesus into your heart. Maybe someone's watching online, and you're like, what does this mean? It's simple. It just means the one who created you comes into your heart and helps flush out everything bad and replace it with everything good. All the promises I talked about tonight become yours, become available for you. And the second opportunity is, you know, maybe you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, but you truly haven't made him Lord of your life. And that's nothing that I can do for you. It's nothing Jake, Pastor Mike, Pastor Aaron, Pastor Angie can do for you. It's only you can make that decision. And it's not hard. You're going to make the decision and say, all right, Lord, you know what? I've been putting my job first. I've been putting my, my friends first. I've been putting drugs and alcohol first. And I, you know what? I'm putting that on the altar, Lord. And just like Brother Jake, he said, the way burdens and yokes are destroyed is consuming fire. So, Lord, we thank you tonight. It's simple. If you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart, all you have to say is, Lord, just repeat this after me, everyone here. Say, Jesus, I believe that you love me. I believe that you came to earth as a man. You lived a sin-free life. You made the choice to give up your life, to take sin and sickness on the cross. I believe that you died and you overcame death, hell, and the grave for me. You are alive, seated at the right hand of God, making petitions for me. Come into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. That's simple. Lord, and I thank you there are people here at the sound of my voice making the decision to make you Lord of their life, Lord. That means every decision we're getting you involved. You are the first say in the final say. If your word didn't say it, I'm not taking it. I'm not settling for second best. You have the best laid up for me. You want the best for your kids, just like you in the natural want the best for your children. The good news is he's got an inexhaustible supply. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord, as the word went forth today that we're not just hearers of the word, we're doers. Lord, we're going to make the decision to get into your word more. 
to open the Bible first thing in the morning. The last thing we look at, Lord, is your word. We're communing, communing with you on a daily basis throughout our day. We're choosing to be kind, Lord. Hallelujah. We're choosing to be Christ-like. And I thank you we don't have to do it all on ourselves. Lord, we don't have to do it alone. That you're there leading us, guiding us every single step of the way, Lord. And I thank you your word works. You're no respecter of persons. Just like the testimonies that went forth tonight, we are all partakers, hallelujah, of your blessing. And I thank you for your protection over us, protection over this country, Lord. We pray for our leaders now, Lord. I thank you that you are our king, hallelujah. You are the one we serve, and because of that, no matter where we live, no matter what country we live, no matter what state, city, we're blessed, Lord. Regardless of what we see, regardless of what we hear, we are protected by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. And I thank you, we are a light to this nation in this dark world, Lord. And that darkness cannot overcome the light. Light wins every time, Lord. And I thank you, as your child, we just spread the light. We don't hide it under a bushel, Lord. We're not afraid to talk about Jesus and what he's done for us. And when we receive compliments, we give glory to you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing every single person here, Lord, financially, physically, spiritually, spirit, soul, body, Lord, like it says in 1 Thessalonians, complete, wanting nothing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Prayer couples, you can come forward. If you have prayer needs in your life, you want us to join our faith with you, we're here to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Church is on Sunday, two services. I think we also have Get Rooted starting up this Sunday, which is an awesome, awesome class at 9.15 during first service. It's going to be in the classroom to my right. It's, if you haven't taken it, come take it. It's going to be an awesome time. Actually, it's not this Sunday. It is the following Sunday. It's the 1st of February. I'm sorry. I'm early. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Jeff. You good? You love Jesus? Well, we love you. You're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're blessed going in, blessed coming out. Everything you set your hands to, you're the lender, not the borrower. You're good looking. You're dismissed. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you, Jesus.